Welcome to the Hello Orlandia Weekly News. We bring you all the key news stories in and about Poland. US President Joe Biden staged a high-profile visit to Poland on Tuesday and Wednesday of last week, following immediately after his Monday visit to Kyiv, time to mark the first anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine at the end of the same week. In both countries, Biden was effusive in his verbal support of Ukrainian resistance, and while in Warsaw, warmly praised Poland for its stance on the conflict. However, with the West collectively only now sorting out the logistics of sending modern tanks to Ukraine, and still shying away from sending fighter jets, it begs the question of what's the morality of giving Ukraine just enough support to survive, but not enough to win. In whose real interests was Joe Biden's visit to Warsaw then? It was undoubtedly reassuring for many Poles, but the visuals of the speech in the gardens of the Royal Castle will no doubt provide useful props for Biden's re-election campaign, assuming his embattled administration gets that far. Also at a time when the European Union is once again banging the tired drum of the so-called rule of law issue in Poland, it should be remembered that were it not for the catastrophic developments in Ukraine, that forced a shotgun marriage between the Biden administration and the Zednechona Pravica government in Warsaw, the US would now be firmly aligned with the European Commission against Poland's assertion of her own sovereignty and independence vis-à-vis the European Union. The main developments over the past week have included President Biden pledges to defend literally every inch of NATO on a visit to Poland. Prime Minister Morawiecki visits Kyiv on the first anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Poland and Belarus engage in tit-for-tat diplomatic expulsions. And the Polish and Ukrainian ambassadors to Ireland release a joint video under the heading Glory to Ukraine. Although the impact was slightly diminished by the symbolism of President Biden's visit to Kyiv the previous day, On Tuesday and Wednesday, Poland was at the centre of the world media spotlight during the US leader's visit to Warsaw. The highlights were his public address at the Royal Castle on Tuesday evening and his attendance at the summit meeting at the Bucharest 9, NATO members on the alliance's eastern flank, on Wednesday. During his address in Warsaw, Biden pledged that the US and its allies will not tire of supporting Kyiv and that Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia. The US president repeatedly thanked the Polish nation for its role in galvanizing Western opposition to the Russian invasion and for its generosity in accepting millions of Ukrainian refugees. He described Poland as one of our great allies. Speaking before the US leader, Poland's president Andrzej Duda told the crowd that We stand with Ukraine and will continue to do so. There is no freedom without solidarity. He added, Long live free Ukraine. Long live Poland's alliance with the United States. Long live NATO. Long live the free world. Earlier on Tuesday, Biden had met with President Andrzej Duda at the presidential palace in Warsaw. During his visit, the US president also met with other Polish government and political leaders, and had a bilateral meeting with Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki. During the meeting with fellow NATO leaders on Wednesday, Biden said that Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, the principle of collective defence, is a sacred commitment, and that his country will defend literally every inch of NATO. While in Poland, President Biden took the opportunity to get blessed ashes on Ash Wednesday in a specially organised mass with Father Wieszław Davidowski. Biden commented on Twitter that Today I join Christians worldwide in observing Ash Wednesday. The Lenten season is a time for reflection and discernment and an opportunity to recommit ourselves to God and to one another. May we continue to keep the faith and look with hopeful hearts towards Easter. 
The policies of the Biden administration in many areas are, of course, sharply at variance with the teachings of the Catholic Church. You're listening to the Hello Orlandia Weekly News. On Friday's exact anniversary of the Russian invasion, Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki was in Kyiv, where he held a joint press conference with President Volodymyr Zelensky and announced the handover of the first four Leopard tanks that form part of the latest initiative to strengthen Ukraine's defence. Morawiecki commented that, I came here not only with a word of support. Poland, as the first European country, symbolically hands over to you, President Zelensky, the first four Polish Leopard tanks. We will deliver more and urge our EU and NATO partners to do the same. President Zelensky described the Polish leader's presence in Kyiv on the first anniversary as a very powerful symbol of the unity between Ukraine and Poland, of our shared steadfastness, our solidarity. During his visit, Morawiecki also met with his Ukrainian counterpart and laid a wreath at the Wall of Remembrance of the Fallen for Ukraine. Relations between Poland and the neighbouring Russian puppet state of Belarus continue to be in a state of deep freeze. Last Thursday, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Warsaw announced the expulsion of the Belarusian defence attaché in direct retaliation for the earlier expulsion of three Polish diplomats by Belarus. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Łukasz Jasina said that the three expelled Polish diplomats have already left Belarus. The three, a Polish border guard liaison officer and two employees of the Polish consulate in Grodno, had been ordered out on February 17th. It followed a spat over Poland's announcement on February 9th that it was suspending traffic flows at the Bobrovniki border crossing between the two countries until further notice, in response to the sentencing of Polish-Belarusian journalist and activist Andrzej Pochobu to eight years' imprisonment by a court in Grodno. Last Thursday, Główna Urząd Statystyczne, GUS, or Statistics Poland, reported that unemployment rose to 5.5% in January from 5.2% in December, in line with an earlier estimate by the Ministry of Family and Social Policy. GUS reported that there were around 857,600 people without work at the end of January, compared to 812,300 a month earlier. In sports news, Poland's Hubert Hurkacz on Sunday claimed his sixth ATP singles title, winning the Marseille Open in France on a 6-3, 7-6 scoreline against home favourite Benjamin Bonzi. The 25-year-old Pole holds the world number 11 spot in the ATP rankings. However, it hasn't been all good news for Polish tennis stars over the past week. On Saturday, women's world number 1, Iga Świątek, was unexpectedly beaten by Barbora Krejcihova of the Czech Republic. 6-4, 6-2, in the final of the Dubai Tennis Championships in the United Arab Emirates. The previous week, Świątek had successfully defended her Qatar Open title, claiming her 12th career singles title in the process. Well, you can't win them all. Turning to developments related to Poland and Ireland, for last Friday's first anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the ambassadors to Ireland of Poland and Ukraine, Anna Sohanska and Larisha Garasko, respectively, released a joint video under the heading Glory to Ukraine in which, in the words of the Polish embassy in Dublin, they commemorate blameless victims of the conflict and call for continued support for Ukraine. The Polish embassy in Dublin has urged people to attend the screening of the award-winning movie Tata as part of the Dublin International Film Festival on Wednesday, March 1st, at 3.30pm in the Lighthouse Cinema in Smithfield, Dublin. This Polish-Ukrainian co-production by Anna Maliszewska, tells the story of Michał, a truck driver who is forced to take his young daughter and their best friend with him 
along the highways of Poland and Ukraine. In doing so, he opens them up to a rapidly changing world as he contemplates his own life priorities. That's all from the Hello Orlandia Weekly News for this week. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to bringing you more news and information next week.